Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sumesh. You're here because you want to learn some trading strategies, how to start the basic terminologies and all sort of stuff, right? Actually, how to basics to all the way the advanced. That's why you're here because you click to check the title. You're like, man, it's a full course. Let me see. All right. So this video is going to be a long video and but just stick with me. This is going to be freaking awesome. I will break down everything that you need to know about trading. OK, from basics to advanced. It won't have like really advanced topics, but we'll cover the more most of the ground that we need everything that you need to know about trading so first things first for like a couple of minutes let me tell you who i am been day trading for five plus years i started trading in about 2018 or august or september that's when i actually first learned about trading towards the end of 2018 that's when i kind of like got started 2019 was losing money 2018 and 2019 was losing money 2020 21 22 23 i've been profitable all these years and now it's 2024 and i'm recording this video for you hopefully this video helps you take you to the next level let's freaking do this so you might be here from my instagram or you found out about me from maybe youtube or wherever make sure you are on my instagram because that's where i post all those little tips and tricks about trading every day day to day basis and let's just jump into it let's help you make some money let's freaking go first things first fam welcome to kk apple university and this is a course that i'm gonna break down everything that you need to know but what are the things that we are working on so the table of content for this whole thing would be First, we'll go over the basic terminology, the stuff. So you understand when I'm explaining stuff, I'm going to use these basic terminologies. Okay. If you miss this basic terminologies, then you will not be able to understand what I mean by certain terms. You know, the nicknames that we often have for certain things, like you may have a favorite bar or something and you always call it by a nickname, but somebody else outside your circle doesn't understand that nickname. You see what I'm saying? So this basic terminology is where I'll tell you those little nicknames that you need, where the little nitty gritties of the stuff that you need for the whole course. And the base, that's where basic terminology and then we'll go over how to read candlestick and this might be like oh man i already know this maybe actually you don't maybe you're reading it all wrong man that's why you're not making money all right so we'll go over how to read candlesticks the stuff that you actually need in order to see if the candlestick is actually even good which is candlestick patterns right these are different from chart patterns candlestick patterns are a little bit different from chart patterns chart patterns are usually so this is how kind of the game works right so first comes the candles a few candles make chart patterns okay a few of them make chart patterns sorry candle patterns all right a few of the candle patterns make chart patterns a few of the chart patterns make support and resistance few of the support and resistance makes pretty much trend and that's how the game pretty much work now the next thing that we're going to talk about is how you can set up your trading view trading view is a software that i use to literally put my charts on and if you're using think or swim or anything else man here's the thing i have tried using every other platform but trading view so far by far has been my best the reason why is because the way they have literally displaying the indicators and stuff it's totally different than everything else so i have back tested all my strategies on trading view if you compare think or swim or trading view chart together and the same chart same time frame same everything the indicator value of think or swim and trading view will be a little bit different so i have back tested everything that i'm going to teach you on trading view so if you are like trying to go over and do stuff on think or swim man good luck trading view by far the best application that i personally think so make sure that you set up your trading view the way I have. And then we'll go over examples of some candlestick patterns used on daily charts. I'll give you some examples, the charts, how to actually break them down and all the stuff. And then we'll go over support and resistance levels, how to draw support and resistance levels, how to actually make money from support and resistance levels, all, stuff, all that stuff. Then we'll go over some chart patterns. Okay, it says chart patterns, but and then we'll go over how to trade using technical analysis. Now, technical analysis is which we need to in order to make money. We day traders, man, we make money from technical analysis we look at the charts and we're like man this looks really good that's how we make money you see what i'm saying so if you do not know how to actually trade using the technical analysis you will not be able to make money okay we need to learn how to trade using and then comes grocery for options so i'll break down the options for you if you have no idea about options you can always go and watch my four hour trading um, option trading course which is after the video you can go but i will cover the stuff that actually matters here okay the little tips and tricks that i have used over the years and then comes how I day trade, the secret, how day trade, my three step framework. Now you will be very tempted to just skip to this particular thing. It's cool. Hey, you can go there, but I promise you, if you do not go all of this, you will not be able to understand this. Uh, you might go and you might try to be like, oh, let me cut the learning curve. But nah, man, if you can't literally put like, doesn't matter how long this video becomes, if you can't put that long in your future, do you think future has any time for you? Even your future will not actually care about you if you do not care about your future. 
Think about that for a minute. All right. So stop trying to just cut the corners and just stick with the video. I promise you it will be the best video that you ever watch. All right. Then we'll go over risk management, the psychology, all sort of stuff that you need in order to make money. Because at the end of the day, if you do not have trading psychology, if you do not know how to manage risk, if you do not know how much money to put in a trade, if you do not know which option contract to choose and how to manage the risk and actually how to respect the stop loss, you will not be able to make money from trading. And I'm telling you a fact. Okay, I've been day trading for a long time. I've seen a lot of day traders come and go. And I've trained over literally thousand plus day traders and I've seen what works for them, what doesn't work for them. I've seen a lot of people. If you do not have risk management, you are just a little guest that is hanging around here in the big boys game and this is a big boys game all right so let's just get started and time to make you some money man let's go now basic terminology we'll go over the basic terminology for some of the stuff that actually matters if you're a complete beginner this is exactly for you if you're somewhere in the middle this is exactly for you and if you're a very advanced level you might think you're advanced but if you're not making money you're actually not advanced because advanced is just for the pros who make million dollars a year plus all right now basic terminology first comes a stock what is a stock stock is a type of investment representing an ownership share in a company investors buy stocks that they think will go up over time for example let's say apple is is a $150 stock. Now, basically what they do, let's say you and me go in a business together, right? You and me go in a business together and what we do is we open a cafe. So we go half and half. All right, so I'm a 50% ownership, you are a 50% owner. So what is that? I own one share, you own one share. Basically, they're two different shares of the cafe, of the business, of the company, and we both own one each. Like, think about it. Even if you divide into 100,000 shares, but you own 50,000, I own 50,000 shares, that's still, you own half, I own half. That's share, okay? Now, big companies divide, they come literally big, like Apple, they divide into very, very small pieces. So if Apple is a $3 trillion company, which is a lot of freaking zeros, by the way, I think so. I think so. This is Apple. If it's 150, you do the math. That's when how many pieces they have in a company. Okay. That's why if you own one share, you own that little tiny piece of the company. Now, we are not investors. We do not care about owning the pieces unless you actually want to invest money into something. Cool. But otherwise, we only need to know what is a stock just if you're a complete beginner, all right? Now, what is next? Apple is a blue chip stock. What is a blue chip stock? Blue chip stock is simply a big company that's a pretty much a blue chip stock. For example, Amazon, Netflix, the stuff that you know, a very leading company, stuff that you know every single day, the stuff that you use every single day. Blue chip company like McDonald's, right? Apple, Nvidia, all these companies, Tesla, Amazon, um, AMD, you see Facebook, Meta now. All these companies are blue chip stocks because they're leading, they're very, very large and they're very leading companies. So they're called blue chip stocks. Now, what are bulls? Bulls are buyers. Bulls means a buyer. Now, why? do bulls called buyers now a bull by definition is an investor who buys shares because they believe the market is going to rise so they believe the market can go up that's why they buy and the bulls is another word for basically market going up bulls means buyers okay now how do i kind of remember it you know how everyone knows bull here right have you ever seen the bull strikes up? He literally puts his like thing, boom, he strikes up. That's why bull strikes up, the market goes up. That is why, right? Sweet. Now, a bull market is when the stock market as a whole is in a strong period of increased prices. Now, a bull is a buyer, bull strikes up. And when we say it's a bull market, that means stock market is just going higher. It's prolonged period of increased prices means an uptrend, price is going up. And what is a bear market? What are bears though? Bears are simple, man. Bears are sellers. Just the other way around. Bears are sellers. Bear by definition is an investor who sells shares because they believe that the market is going down. Now, why are they called bears? Because bears strike down. They literally scratch downwards. Okay, that's why they're called bears. Now, bear market is when the stock market, bear market is when the stock market is in a long period of decreased prices, downtrend. Okay, when market goes down, keep going down, that's called a bear market. Sweet. Now, bears are sellers, they will sell shares as they believe market is going negative, bears strike down. What is a bid price? Bid price is the highest price that the investors will pay to buy a stock option. And the ask price is the lowest price they will accept to sell stock option. For example, let's say you wanna sell your iPhone, right? If you wanna sell your iPhone, this iPhone that you wanna sell, you put on your Facebook marketplace or whatever, like eBay, Craigslist, whatever. You put this iPhone to sell for hundred bucks or thousand, let's say thousand dollars for you know ease. 
that's your ask price because you own the phone so you literally can ask for whatever you own you're like okay this is mine i need a thousand dollars but somebody on the other side of the you know city he's looking at you like oh I like this iPhone, it's so cool. Oh my God, I wanna buy it, but I only have $800. So he sends you a message and he goes, hey, would you accept 800 for it? Now what is 800? That's a bid, he's just making a bid. Like you can still negotiate. You can be like, no, maybe 950, he's like, no, maybe 850. But this whole thing, he's dropping a bid. You are, drop, you are literally having an ask. That is called bid and ask, okay? A bid price is the highest price that literally the investor will pay to buy your phone or your Talk. ask is the lowest price that you are willing to accept for your phone what is the literally the spread the spread is very simple the difference between the two numbers let's say you want to have a thousand dollars phone he want to give you eight hundred dollars the difference between them is called spread so spread you might have heard the word spread spread simply means ask minus bid and i promise you ask is always going to be higher than the bid Think about it. Somebody offering you $800 for the phone and you're like, nah, just give me 600. Or you post an ad for your phone for 600 and somebody goes, I'll buy for 800. You're like, what? No, it doesn't happen, right? So ask price is always going to be higher than the bid price, okay? Now, spread simply means when the ask is more than the bid, what is the difference? $1,000 minus 800, 200 becomes the spread bid ask spread now bid ask spread is ask price minus bid price ask price will always be higher the narrower or smaller the difference between the bids and asks the better for example if you really want to sell your iphone okay you want to sell for a thousand dollars and somebody comes along and um, say bid at 800 you're like okay cool sweet let me let me wait for the better price somebody comes in drops in 850 somebody comes in drops in 900 somebody comes in drops 950 now you clearly no you sitting there you clearly know damn why do they all all of them want to buy my phone like it's only been two minutes and literally the price is going up the your ask and the bid the spread is getting so 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 small now because somebody want to offer you 950 it was two it was a 200 all difference now it's only 10 dollar difference because they're offering you 990 for the phone think about it the narrower it is easier it will be for you to sell the stuff because there's less negotiation, okay? You're gonna sell the phone for 1,000, he's offering you 990, you're like, you know what, let's do it. But if he's offering you 800, you're like, nah, nah, there's more negotiation. So narrower it is, better it is usually, okay? Now, what is meaning of long? It simply means a bullish position, putting your money, hoping to price, hoping the price to go up, in which the buyer is thinking the price of the stock or option is going to increase over time. So long simply means I'm going long. So you say, I'm going long on these options, or I'm going long on an Apple. That simply means you can buy stocks for a company to go long, or you can buy call option contracts to go long. That means you think that the prices can go up. That's when you say, I'm going long, okay? Like long, oh, it's so long. The list is so long because you think, oh, it can really make a move higher, okay? The list is so long, oh, I'm gonna go long. What is short? The term refers to a bearish position where a seller believes the price of a stock or option is going to move lower over time. You can short stocks of a company by just placing the order reversed instead of buying first like you would normally do you just sell first a lot of people get confused with shorting man shorting is so simple just think about it for a minute you know what shorting is shorting simply means let's say for example it's highly illegal, uh, illegal if somebody from the company by the way tells you what to do but for example i'm just you know dropping for educational purposes somebody works in a company and he sees oh shit this is not actually good for this company this this phone is getting overheated and they need to recall all the phones it's not a good news the company is going to literally lose so much money because they have to refund to every single customer and they have sold a million phones so it's a bad news right Right? And, you know, he's walking down the street talking on a phone and somebody hears him talking the whole story. Um, and he's talking to somebody from the company like what they should do. Somebody hears him. So the guy knows now the company prices can go down. So what can you do is you can literally go to that stock, place an order of shorting the order, which is you're betting that the prices can go down. When you say long, you're betting the prices to go up, but shorting simply means placing the bet that the prices can go down. Now, here's the thing, okay? Shorting is not hard. It's actually very easy. You know what you do in shorting? You just, you know how when you go long, you press the buy button first, and when you have to sell, you press the sell button pretty much. In shorting, you do the opposite. So you don't, no need to overcomplicate it, no need to understand it anymore. It's just like, oh, if you're betting the price to go up, you buy first and sell later, right? Or exit your position later. When you're shorting, this is what you do. You sell first, 
you just press the other button first you sell first and then you buy back later pretty much that's how simple it is right now what is scalping scalping just simply means scalpers make several hundred there's three different types of trading firm scalping day trading and swing trading and long term you can say but scalpers make several dozen trades even like a lot of man they make a lot of trades scalpers are trying to scalp a very small percentage of profit from each trade they just want to catch a move from hundred dollars to hundred dollars and ten cents but they're doing with very very big size when they're doing it very with very big size you know what happens they make the money they make small money or decent money from big size they take big risk but they just want to catch small moves okay, scalping is a general term that is used to describe rapid day trading Sp scalpers go in heavy and take profits quickly you can make a lot of money in short period of time if you know what you're doing but now here's the thing i personally think scalping is just another term to you be used for oh i'm too scared to lose <laughs> I mean, if the market asks you to day trade, why wouldn't you day trade? It, like with me, man, if the market wants me to day trade, I'm day trading. Literally, if the market wants me to catch big moves, I'm catching big moves. But if the market is choppy, I'm scalping. You see what I'm saying? If there's a thousand percent return on option that I can have, I'm catching that. If I know the market can make a big move, it just broke a weekly, daily level, strong level. It can literally push higher. I'm catching a big move. I'm not scalping. I'm catching a big move. Right. So what a lot of people do is they literally want to be a scalper because they do not have enough like guts or they are, I'm sorry to use the word, and they can't control their fucking emotions and they just don't want to take the risk. So they are happy with small profits. Um, and there's a lot of bullshit fucking that goes around on the social media fam. People talking about shit like, oh man, nobody goes broke taking profits. Nobody gets rich taking small fucking profits. Put this in your goddamn head. Right? If you take small profits, man, you ain't gonna get rich. Like what? <laughs> You're talking about you quitting your fucking job to day trade full time and now your wife asks you how much money you made today and you're like 40 bucks and she's gonna be like bro get the fucking hell out of here and go to the fucking job <laughs> you ain't gonna goddamn stay home and trade and see what i'm saying so but if your wife asks you how much money you made today and you tell her four thousand you're like oh shit damn you want me to fucking make you some food but you see what i'm saying so try to catch bigger moves that's where the money is okay day trading now what is day trading day trading like day traders are traders who get in stocks hoping to sell them the same day if they buy 9 30 eastern time they can sell at 9 50 they can sell literally 10 30 or 11 30 any time before the market close whether it takes them five minutes or a few hours the purpose of being a day trader is to sell your position the same day if you open your position literally on march 1st you close your position on march 1st as well same day okay now what is swing trading swing trading refers to the group of people who hold their positions for more than one day you can hold a position for two days or two years they both will be considered as swing trading period so you can open your position on march 1st you can sell on march 2nd you are a swing trader you can close on literally october 3rd you are a swing trader okay don't over confuse yourself don't over complicate this this stuff is easy all right now next comes your technical trading what is technical trading technical trading are the consumed like literally charts and graphs we watch different lines signals and like literally we look for confluence divergence that might give us buy or sell signals that's technical trading right we look at the charts we look at the trading view charts we look at the graphs we look at draw some levels lines that all comes under technical trading and then comes fundamental trading fundamental trading literally like it goes on over stuff like oh let me see the earning reports let me see the balance sheet i don't do this stuff man it's too fucking boring you see what i'm saying examining things like corporate events like actual anticipated earnings stock splits real like uh, all this stuff it's too boring like i want to make money when i'm young so that's why i day trade you see what i'm saying i don't want to make money you sit there and fucking wait for 50 years and uh, by the time i'm 75 and then i'm i have a million dollars i i don't have time for that shit i want to make money when i'm young when i have energy when I can literally help my parents to fucking live the life that they want to live. That's how I want to go. And technical trading is pretty much that did the job for me. See what I'm saying? Now, volume. Volume is the amount of an asset or security that changes hand over some period of time, often over the course of a day. For instance, for example, the stock trading volume would refer to number of shares of security traded between its open and close. Okay, so if you're looking at a daily chart and you're like, okay, how many con how many option, you know, how many how much volume there was. So if you sell your phone. If 10 of your friends sold your phone, sold their phone to someone and all 10 sold, they're like 10 people, sold their phone, okay, sold their phone to somebody, people bought 10 phones now, 10 people bought 10 phones. Now, what's the volume here? 10. The amount of assets or security that changes hand, not 20, nah, 10. The amount of 
the assets that change his hand. That's pretty much it. Volume can be calculated on a smaller time frame and larger time frame as well. Now, time frame simply means if you go on a five minute chart, it will give you a different volume, like just a zoomed in version. Like this happened over a course of day, right? You sold 10 iPhones over a course of one day. Now, if you want to look at hourly, let's say it took you 10 hours to sell 10 phones. Every hour, it took you one phone to sell. So what's the um, volume for that particular hour? One, but 10 hours, it becomes for the day, all together it becomes 10. See what I'm saying? Now, obviously there's much more to the markets than just these 15 terms that I went over, but I'll be explaining to you as we go further in the course as well. I'll break them down, all be good. Now, by the way, fam, you're doing extremely well. I just wanna literally take a moment and let you know you're fucking killing it. You're doing well, and you're already in about 20, 25 minutes of the course. You're doing well. Keep going, keep pushing, you got this. All right, I know you do, keep going. By the way, don't have to binge watch, pause the video, go get a drink. You'll be fine, you'll be completely fine. All right, it's okay. You wanna hustle, sweet. I love it, I appreciate it, but hey, just want to let you know i'm fucking proud of you you could be doing anything you could be literally watching netflix right now but you are watching this video that means you're fucking hungry and you got this all right let's fucking go get to the next point which is how to read candlesticks okay how to read candlesticks now every single candlestick has four data points doesn't matter what candlestick you look at every single candlestick has four points the four points is the opening price, which is the opening price, open, high, low, close. It's often called OHLC, okay? Open, high, low, close. What's open? The opening price of the candle, okay? Opening price of the candle. Where did the candle open? Right here. The highest price over a fixed period. Let's say this is a five minute chart. So on the five minute chart, this is where the price opened, let's say $100. The lowest point was 99. The highest price was 105, but it closed at 104, okay? Now this is a green candle, why? Because it opened 100, closed at 104. What would have happened if it opened at 100 and closed at 96? It would be a red candle, you see what I'm saying? So anything that comes above this closing price, from closing price to the high of the day, that becomes a wick. You see this, this becomes a little wick. From opening price to low of the day, this becomes a wick, okay? We just wanna see the measuring distance from opening to closing price, the measuring distance, that becomes the candle body, this is called body, and these are called wicks, literally. You see a candle, have you ever seen a candle? I'm pretty sure you do, that's called a wick, okay? So the opening price, highest price over a fixed, and this can literally, if this, this five minute chart, if you're watching a weekly chart, it will have high, closing open low everything okay doesn't matter what candlestick you watch every single candlestick has these four points all right now each candlestick represents a specific time frame and give data about price open high low close during that given period now on a five minute of course on a five minute chart it will only show you five minute candles that means every five minutes this every candle represents five minutes if you look at a weekly chart it's not going to show you five minute candle is it it's going to show you a weekly candle right so each candlestick represents a specific time frame. It also gives information about the assets opening high, low, close during that period. Okay. Now, standard candlesticks are consist. Standard candlesticks consist of a candle body plus upper and lower wick, as I explained right here. It consists of body and the wick. All right. The candle body extends to the closing price from the opening price of an asset for a particular period. So, if it opens right here but closes at the bottom right here. This is the open, this is the close, and this is the low high, whatever, right? The candle body extends from, from the open to the closing price. And next, these wicks are just like things hanging, all right? The tip of upper wick of the candle will show the highest price attained during that given period. And literally the bottom wick will literally be the time of the lowest point of that given candle, all right? It's not hard, it's simple. That's all it is, all right? Now, let's go over candlesticks a little bit more. Now, candlesticks are either bullish or bearish, depending on the direction of the price during the period they are drawn for. If it's a green candle, that means price opened here, it closed higher. That means it went up. How do the bulls strike? They strike upwards. That means it's bull. It's bullish, we usually say, okay? If it opened higher and closed lower, how do the bears strike? Bears strike downwards. What happened? This went down. This is bearish. 
they are bullish or bearish candles are either bullish or bearish depending on the direction of the price during the period they are drawn from bullish versus bearish candles okay a bullish candlestick forms when the stock opens at a certain level and closes at a higher point okay that's called bullish candlestick a bearish candlestick forms when the price opens at a certain level and closes at a lower price that's called bearish candlestick for example right here this is the open event to close these became the wicks okay this is the open right here it went down these became the wicks okay this is how the candle would have gone let's say for example for this one it opened here it went down so every time it goes down that's like the seller is trying to take over okay now buyers came along buyers pushed the price high and then sellers came in a little bit and it closed here this is how it would have went this is what the candlestick kind of looks like if you zoom in a little bit price opened here went down but what's the most amount of who covered the most amount of literally the most amount of distance on this candle from lowest point to this point who covered the most distance the people who push the price up who pushes the price up bulls they strike upwards so what is this candle this candle becomes a bullish candle what is this candle becomes a bearish candle you see what i'm saying all right now let's go with the trading view chart like this particular chart right here you can use men like literally this graph right here that you see is a four hour candlestick chart where each of the candlestick represents a four hour period you see this four hour right here okay that means each candle this is a four can four hour four hour four hour four hour four hour four hours every single candle takes four hours to form okay now you can use as many different chart time frames to kind of plot candlestick charts in your technical analysis system you just need to select instead of four hours just select 10 minutes it will automatically do it or five minutes the most common time frame that people use are one minute five minute 15 minute 30 one hour four hour daily weekly monthly i personally use two minutes a lot i use five minutes a lot i use 10 minutes a lot and i use 60 minutes and i use daily candles okay 60 minutes like one hour candles you got it now this is what trading view looks like this is why i love it so much it's just so clean all right now let's go over long and short candles so what is a long and short candle long green candlesticks show strong buying pressure that means literally price opened here and it made a huge move up closed here see after a huge literally after a huge drop in price long green candlestick can mark a potential turning point or support level thinking of support as literally the floor of your house so when something falls from a lot like let's say you drop your phone you drop your phone from the highs and it hits the hits the ground and it bounces a little bit right it hits the ground and go boom then it falls so that little bounce wherever it happens that becomes a support okay after a huge drop in price and if you see a candle like this that means there's a strong area where a lot of buyers are interested because buyers push the price higher and these candlesticks only formed when buyers come along okay now long red candlestick shows strong selling pressure why because it opened here and it literally closed so down below this is where it closed that's why it's a bearish candle because bears strike down right a huge huge move to the upside long red candlesticks can foreshadow a turning point or mark a future resistance level think of resistance as roof of the house if i throw the phone high up you're gonna hit the ceiling come down right that's exactly what this means okay that's what resistance means the ceiling of your room all right now just speaking generally the longer the body is the more intense the buying or selling pressure the longer the body that means a lot of buying pressure here longer the body that means a lot of selling pressure here okay but on the other hand short candlesticks means there are very little buying or selling activities you see this they're very little buying or selling activities not a lot of people are kind of interested in it they're like yeah whatever you see what i'm saying in the common trading lingo bulls means buyers and bear means sellers all right now let's go over short green candlesticks with small bodies show that the buyers were there but they are one short green candlesticks with small bodies show that the buyers were there but they were not that strong and they failed to make a huge impact on the stock prices why stock opened here they made a very little move literally closed here that means the buyers were not so strong that means literally they were just like boop that's it they were not really able to strike like a full bull see what i'm saying that means they were not that strong candles short green candles with small bodies indicate it was not that strong now short red bodies with small bodies literally shows us that the sellers were there but they were not that strong and they failed to make huge impact on the stock prices 
okay that means opened right here closed right here it was a very small move it was not strong enough for the stock to kind of keep pushing higher okay now let's look at different type of candlesticks now you understand now you, now you understand what candlesticks is so let's look at what different type of candlestick patterns they are the stuff that i like the most this the first one that i like the most is called marubozu candle you do not need to remember this i like to call them boner candles okay now like hey what are you thinking right now i like to call them boner candles because it's just long freaking candle straight up I, Moribozu candles are wonderful examples of long candlesticks. Moribozu does not have a higher or lower wick. What does that mean? That means the moment it opened, they did not let any sellers kind of make a wick. The moment it opened, the bulls took over. They made the price shoot up straight up. There was no wick at all. Okay, and the high and low are represented by the candle opening or closing of the candles. A green Moribozu form when the open equals the low. Open is the lowest price as well, and close means the high. This candlestick indicates that the buyers control the price from literally the first trade within the candle to the last trade within that candle. It's very, very, very bullish. Okay, now red Moribozu or red Bono candle forms when the open equals the high of the candle and the close equals the low of the candle. This candlestick indicates the sellers control the price literally from the opening price to the closing price from the first to last trade. This is either very, very bullish candles or very, very, very bearish candles. You need to pay attention to them when you are trading. You want to know if there's a boner candle fam, literally. If it's a very, very critical level and you see such a critical level and then there's a boner candle literally going through, that means stock is just going to literally blow up. You see what I'm saying? Now the next one is that I love the most is long versus short wicks. Okay, these are called pin bar candles as well. I love them by the way. Okay, now candlesticks with long, long, long upper wick and short lower wick. So these candlesticks have a long upper wick. Okay, so we're looking at this um, red candle first. Have a long upper wick. Now think about this for a minute. Okay, what I want you to do is just focus on this particular candle. I just take everything away. Focus whatever you're doing right now. Just focus on this particular candle for now. What happened on this candle? It, this candle kind of looks like this. Yeah, it opened because it's a red candle. That means base strike down. It opened here, closed here. Now you might be like, but it only made a small move. But think about it. This is where it opened. This is the highest point of the candle. So we opened, went to the highs. So bulls, that means the bulls would had bulls had this in control. Bulls were like, man, I'ma fucking take this. This looks good. And then the sellers came. Sellers were like, nope. Went to the lows. And then then bulls came again and it closed like this. But looking at this candle, who had the most control over this candle? Who covered the most amount of distance from highs to lows? Who covered the most distance? Sellers. Or bears so this becomes a bearish candle it's a super bearish candle because they literally fought the all the bear all the bulls and the bears took over price went down okay it indicates the sellers dominated during the session okay on the other side candlesticks with the long lower wick and short upper wick indicates the buyers dominated the session literally same thing it opens here goes down then the buyers take over and they close like this who had the most control who covered the most distance from lows to the highs who covered the most distance bulls so this becomes a bullish candle this is very bullish candle as well okay now you literally are making a killing fam you're doing well and now you're about 35 or 40 whatever the time is man i don't even care um but you're making a killing and i'm so freaking proud of you sometimes you literally gotta take a hand like this and pat yourself you're doing well all right this stuff's not easy again as i said you could have been watching netflix right now but you're doing this so keep pushing keep going i know you got this Maybe grab a drink, maybe another drink. Time for another drink. I think it's for me, it's time for another drink. Definitely, I need to go grab a beer. <laughs> uh, actually, uh, here was the thing fam. Um, I was sitting down, I was like, man, I haven't got nothing much to do. What should I do? Um, I was just sitting down and watching, literally watching Netflix on the couch. And I'm like, man, you know what? Now nah, let me record that video that I wanna record, man. Let me help some people out. So we're here. I just want to break this stuff down and it, it gonna help you make some money and then i want you to send me a photo of you whatever money you made on my instagram and that'll make my day so i feel like that's a time well spent see what i'm saying keep pushing keep going i know you got this pause the video right here i'll wait for you i'll literally sit like this doesn't matter how long you pause the video for i'll sit like this pause the video go grab a drink i'll see you soon okay i hope you pause the video so let's get right into it um hope your drink is yum 
Yo, hope it rings yeah. Anyway, setting up your trading view, fam. Now we're gonna set up your trading view. Let's go over how to set up your trading view and the things that you need, okay? The first step towards setting up your trading view is literally you need to go on the website. You need to go to trading view website, sign up right here. Go to tradingview.com, okay? You can even download the app or from your smartphones, iPads, desktop. This is the app that I use to draw parents, check charts and analyze stocks, all right? If you're working full time, I will definitely recommending downloading an app from an app store or play stores, whatever you use. All right. Then the next step comes is literally go to this chart section to access all the charts. Just click this. It will show you some super charts. I think they call them now super charts. Click that. It will show you all the charts. Boom. Okay. Then go right here. Step three, go literally, this is how the chart will come. It will be an apple or something, but there will be a line chart. Go click right at the top right here where the line says and select candles. Okay, click the line section depicted in the photo and literally choose candles. Then click this arrow icon right here like this. Click this arrow and choose one day time frame. Make sure you on the daily time frame from now. Okay, sweet. This is how you set up your trading view. Now you have it. You can make your trading like I have an account. You see this? I have an account. Kick Apples have an account with them. So you can have your account with them if you want. And this is how you do it. Okay, I really like it. So I'll definitely recommend that you sign up for, I think towards your Black Friday sales or something, they give like 70% off. They give 28 days for free and then 70% off if you sign up or stuff like that. Definitely recommended this. It's good. Um, yeah. All right, now let's go over examples of candlestick patterns used on daily charts. Okay, some of the examples of the candlestick patterns, the patterns that I showed you, just stuff like Morobozu candles, or you might have heard bullish engulfing or bearish engulfing and stuff like this. I'm pretty sure you already know this stuff, um, and I'll break them down a little bit as well for you as we move along, but let's break them down right now, all right? Okay, so first one is bullish harami. What is a bullish harami candle? bullish harami candle is simple candle fam i'll break them all four down for you okay one by one one at a time i think that will be way better so bullish harami kind of goes like this there's a big candle morubozi candle whatever bullish candle the next candle is small candle remember hey i think we all are old enough and we all remember do you remember the pac-man game we used to play when we were kids and it used to eat the little fucking thing so pretty much this is a Pac-Man candle, okay? It's eating the neck, like this candle is getting eaten by the big Pac-Man, pretty much, okay? One of the easiest way to remember. That's called bullish harami. Anything that happens after bullish harami is a bullish setup. Now, how to buy this? This is how I do it. This is, again, educational purposes only. This is what I do. It works for me. I'm just sharing my stuff, my opinions. This is a, what is it? bullish harami candle but how do i buy it i literally if the next day market opens next day when the market open i will buy right above if the market gapped up i'll buy right here stop loss will be just below this particular candle okay if this is a daily chart that's what i'll do all right if you want to zoom in let's zoom in a little bit boom this is what bullish harami looks like it went from 250 to all the way to 270 right here this is how this is what bullish harami candles are like okay then comes bearish engulfing or we'll say, yeah, bearish engulfing does the job. Same thing, bullish engulfing, bearish engulfing, same thing, uh, just like other way around pretty much fam. Um, so what happens here is the Pac-Man just reversed. The Pac-Man is reversed. So this big candle, this particular candle is eating the previous candle fully. Like the highs and lows of this particular candle is eating away the previous candle fully. Okay, look at this. So it's a Pac-Man, but just in reverse bullish engulfing and it's a usually a strong sign to for the prices to go down what is a bullish hammer remember the examples that i gave you in the, at the back fam there you go um i think it was this one this is called hammer candles as well because it kind of looks like a hammer doesn't it look like a hammer like you grab a hammer bang looks like a hammer right so that's why we call them hammers okay which is a hammer candle and it's a bullish candle you see this price is literally forming around 600 price can move up to 720 literally 120 dollar move in a matter of like few days right because of the bullish hammer candles because they have a long wick on the downside okay you got it then next comes 
your evening star dojis i like this evening star dojis evening star dojis are just like oh this particular day candle closed like this or red candle or green candle whatever the next candle just like it gapped up but it couldn't make a big move it just like went like this literally the full body of this candle is away from this and then the next day becomes like this so it's a three-day pattern it's a three-day pattern and this is like literally nobody cares about it um, abundant baby pretty much you see what i'm saying nobody cares about it that is called evening star doji usually that personally means particularly for me that i treat it as like okay that's a neutral candle stocks can go down so I'll start getting ready for the stocks to go down like in this case stocks went from 415 to down to 411 410 area this is how i trade it okay you got it these are the four ways to kind of treat this and let's go over some of the stuff that i wrote down i use candlesticks with volume confirmation during breakouts and assisting my opinion for the next day's price section do not get caught up in attempting to trying to trade based on candlesticks pattern only this can assist you again price movement is never 100 predictable no patterns or indicators 100 right you always need further confirmation before executing a pattern i switch from five minutes i literally this is what i do i switch from five minutes and 15 minute chart during the day from whatever daily happening i'll switch to five minutes or 15 minutes to kind of see what's happening so i can have a little clear idea of what's happening in the market in real time you see what i'm saying and that helps me kind of get better entries and exits on my trades okay sweet you got this i know you do all right now the next is support and resistance levels like we have covered a lot of ground already right you see what i'm saying next is support and resistance levels now this whole thing kind of becomes all right so let's get to support and resistance levels now all right now the next step is support and resistance levels we have covered a lot of ground already we are making a killing man i'm so proud of you you're literally making moves as we go along this is it this is very good i'm very happy with the progress so far that you have okay now let's break down support and resistance levels so what are support and resistance levels in every price chart every single price chart there's a demand and supply where demand is created by buyers who are willing to buy more of the stock and supply is created by sellers who want to sell the stock think about it for ex for example in other words if there's excess of supply prices go down for example the price of a regular stone is zero like if you pick up a garden stone literally if you pick up your garden stone and try to go to your pawn shop and be like hey guys what's going on i want to sell this garden rock like what's so special about this rock oh, nothing just just another rock like nah why because there's so many rocks around the world you see what i'm saying the price of a regular stone regular rock is literally zero why there are plenty of rocks and nobody want to pay high value for just a little piece of rock right a normal rock see what i'm saying why is that the supply is a lot demand is not that much there's a lot of supply even if the demand is a lot there's more supply than the demand so price is zero but what if there is an excess of demand but supply is limited that means the prices go up. For example, let's say all of the tickets to the football game that you want to go to have already been sold, but people still want them. What happens? So to fulfill that demand, man, what people do, people will start selling their tickets to buyers at higher price. Let's say, oh, I bought this ticket for hundred dollars. You know what? Or a thousand dollars. You know what? I want to sell this. I'll sell this for five thousand. Let's see if somebody wants to buy it. Somebody buys it. Buys it. Boom. Here you go. Why? Because tickets are sold out now. There's a lot of demand still. You see what I'm saying? That's why the prices push up because if there's a lot of demand, prices will push up. All right. Now, demand is very, very synonymous with bullish, bulls, and buying. Supply is very synonymous with bearish, bears, and selling. Okay. Now, going forward, I want you to remember a few things. As literally as demand increases, man, price will go up as well. If the demand is going up, price will go up. If the supply increases, price will go down. When demand and supply are equal, price moves sideways. Nobody wants it. Or uh, whosoever wants it gets the, the... You see what I'm saying? Bulls and bears need to literally push it out of control. That's when... If the bulls get... Literally, bulls defeat the bears, what happens? Prices can shoot up. If bears defeat bulls, prices can shoot down. Okay, they need to slug it out of control. This is what support and resistance levels mean. Now, let's look at what is the support first. Okay, let's say this particular chart on Snapchat. This particular level over and over again, every time prices come down here, it's getting bought back up. Now, what is happening here? Support is a price level at which demand is thought to be strong enough to prevent the stock from falling below. It's like the floor of your room. That is this right here. The price broke this. Literally, it became now new, 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 new floor. 
okay in other words support is like a floor if you throw a ball on the floor it bounces right back up from the floor okay now you can see this right here snapchat 71.12 dollars it bounced beautifully over and over again now if this breaks it can again support does not always hold however a support like literally a break below this support level signals that bears have taken control like if it breaks below that means bears have taken control and the prices can really move down breaking of the line of support or line of resistance is called breakouts or breakdowns or whatever you want to call it i like i just call it breakouts whatever for both sides when the price breaks the support line the price of stock will move down nine out of ten times if a critical level breaks towards the downside price will move down nine out of ten times from my personal experience okay that's support now here's the thing how is support established if you see this particular chart right now fam you'll be able to see let me zoom in a little bit 71.12 did this particular thing touch 71.12 no did this thing touch 71.12 no this actually dipped below this a little bit higher why does that happen though because here's the thing if i on my charts marked it at 71.12 but you marked it at 71.10 but somebody else on the other side of the world marked it at 71.05 because that's what they could see now what all of a sudden somebody's buying a 71.05 somebody's buying a 71.12 somebody's buying a 71.15 somebody's buying a 71.2 you see what i'm saying that becomes a zone which is why it's always recommended to make it draw a zone like this on your charts support levels are usually below the current prices but it is not surprising for a stock to trade at or near support support is usually at the downside okay as technical analysis is not a rocket science setting precise support levels can often be difficult in addition price movements can be very volatile briefly dip below support and those are called fake outs this is what happens it will drop below like this make a little wick and shoot up and it's okay you see them saying it's okay that's why you need certain strategies to jump in this just puts the stock in a radar for me i'll break down the stuff that i actually like to watch for example it does not seem logical to consider a support level broken if the price closes 10 cents below the established support level if this is the level that you're watching 66 and the price literally closes 65.90 would you say it's broke no why because i like to consider it as a zone now wait wait maybe let it retest this. You see what I'm saying? I'll break down how to actually enter, but just try to understand this. Don't try to jump ahead, okay? For this reason, some traders and investors establish support zones. Take the example right here, okay? These are the zones, a little wide zone, right? You got it? Now, what is the resistance? Like you see this lily, what happened? Every single time it touched here, it got rejected. Now, why did that get rejected right here? Let me put myself down here. Okay, resistance is a price level at which selling is thought to be strong enough to prevent the stock from rising further. Think of this as your ceiling. If you toss a ball to the ceiling, it comes right back down. You can see example right here, price of Lily. Every time it kind of went to the price level of 86.46, it rejected beautifully. Now resistance does not always hold. However, a break above the resistance can mean stock. Literally, the bulls have taken control over the bears. Breaking of the line of support or line of resistance is called breakout when the stock breaks a resistance line the price of stock will move higher nine out of ten times all right now again if you have this level marked 86.46 i have it marked at 86.50 somebody else has marked at 86.70 what happens it's okay that's why we need to draw zones you see this now everything is like in the zone right resistance levels are usually above the current price but it's not surprising for a stock to trade near the resistance levels at tech literally as technical analysis is not an exact science setting like literally bro it's not an exact science this is just an art that you're gonna get better at over time okay now in addition price movements can be very volatile it can kind of briefly go above the resistance points and then move lower and it's fine which is why we draw this zones for example it does not seem logical to consider a resistance level broken if there's only 10 cents kind of same thing right that's why we draw this okay now trend lines this is where the fun begins fam all right as technical analysis is built on the premise that price trend and the user trend line is essential for both trend identification and confirmation we all know stocks like to trend okay that's how the stocks move up they like to trend 
right? So it's very important to actually understand how they move. So trend line is a line at an angle that connects two or more literally price points and then extends into futures elect. It's just a line of support and resistance. Support comes on the bottom, resistance comes at the top. But rather than being horizontal, they are a little bit vertical. That's the only thing that's different about them. That's it. They just have a little bit of angle. That's it. You see what I'm saying? That's all about it. That's trend lines. Now, I understand. I understand it might be a little bit confusing right now, and it's fine. Let's go over them. Many of the principles relevant to support and resistance levels can be literally applied to trend lines as well. Same shit. Everything still stays the same. Okay? If the stock's moving like this, at the bottom, you draw the support level. If it dips below the support level, prices can go down, right? There are two different types of trend lines, uptrend line, downtrend line, same stuff. All right, uptrend line acts as a support, downtrend line acts as a resistance to the stock. Okay, if it breaks below this, can move up, down. If it breaks below above this, move up. I'll show you an example. Look at this uptrend line. Every time it's touching right here, what happened? It's bouncing off. An uptrend line has a positive incline and is formed by joining two or more low points. First point and second point will help you kind of draw the line, but the third trend literally helps you confirm it that this is there. So the fourth and fifth one you can trade pretty much. The second low must be higher than the first one for the stock to have positive incline. This is just common sense, man. If the first one is here and you need to connect it, if it's the second one is down, you can't have a positive in, positive incline, right? So it has to be higher. The second point has to be higher than the first one for it to have a little positive incline. Just common sense, right? Note that at least three points must be connected before the line is considered to be a valid trend line. You need to have a third point, third respectful point like this one for it to be considered like, all right, fourth time it can bounce like a dead, fifth point it can bounce like a dead, okay? Now, in the picture right here, we connected point one and point two and then point three and we got an uptrend line and at point four and point five, we bounced off the trend line beautifully because the uptrend line acts as a literally your floor or support. Okay, now a break below the uptrend line shows that the demand has reduced and the change in trend can be expected. Think about this. If it breaks below, that means sellers are going to take over. Okay, bears have taken over. Now let's go over the downtrend line. Okay, the downtrend line has a negative incline. It's a negative incline. You see this negative incline downwards. Right? It's formed by joining two or more higher points. You join higher points right here. Look at the top of candles. The second high must be lower than the first for the stock to have a negative incline. Second point must be lower to kind of have it a negative incline. All right. Note that at least three points must be connected before the line is considered to be a valid trend line. First, or for, we can consider this first or first, second, third, kind of fourth and fifth one can be a little bit nicer. Again, these are never aligned. These are always considered a little zone around them. That's why it's never going to be perfect. Perfect doesn't exist in the stock market, all right? It's always a little zone. All right, in the picture right here, we connected point one, two, three, and then we could have traded point four and five as a rejected beautifully of the resistance. A break below or actually a break above the downtrend line shows that the supply has reduced and the change in trend could be expected. If it breaks like this, it can go higher. You got what I'm saying? Bro, I'm proud of you, man. You actually hustling. You're hustling right now. You got this. Let's freaking go. Hey, you know what? Let's just grab a drink. I'm grabbing more water. You grab your drink, whatever you have. Just, all right, let's do cheers. We're in good. We're covering grounds here. This stuff makes me happy, man. I can't, you see, I can't, I kind of get like cheered up with this stuff. <laughs> this literally stuff makes me happy. This is what I do all day, man. I'm like a nerd for the, for lit, <laughs> I'm like a nerd for the charts. I go with charts all day. I watch charts all day. This is what I do. This is what I do for a living. You see what I'm saying? I'm a full-time day trader. And the reason, only reason why I'm able to break it down so well is because I spend whole day doing this stuff. So you... I just find out easy ways to kind of explain to myself because I ex literally learn very, you know, kind of giving examples to myself. So it becomes a little bit easier for me to kind of break down. All right, enough talking. Let's get to it. Chart patterns, fam. In this quick little thing, we're going to discuss chart pattern FAQs. I'm sure you have some questions. We'll break them down. Let's go over them. Okay, now we're going over chart patterns. What are chart patterns? Chart patterns are foundational building blocks of technical analysis. They replicate themselves in the market time and time again and are almost easy to recognize. Now, what does that mean? This right here, what is this? Kind of a flag, right? This is a chart pattern, flag pattern, pretty much. Okay, what is this? It's a double top. See what I'm saying? This is a neckline, price can break below. These are chart patterns. Okay, don't go confused, it's fine. I'll give you some examples and I'll show you how they kind of formed, okay? 
Now, what time frames can I find these patterns on? Who can, like, literally, can they be used for day trading? The basic patterns appear on every single time frame, therefore can be used by scalpers, day traders, swing traders, position traders, and investors. How many types of chart patterns are there? There are literally so many types of chart patterns, fam, but I kind of like them breaking down into three buckets. I break them down to reversal patterns. That means where the price is likely to reverse. So if the price is going up and I see a reversal pattern, that means the prices can move, move lower. The next one is called continuation pattern. That means like, oh, this is formed and the prices can literally shoot up after that. And the third one i like to call them bilateral patterns which means it can go either way like it can go towards the upside or downside whichever okay now the measurement of the chart patterns can be used to project the next price movement and what target to aim for these patterns can either be traded aggressively with less confirmation or conservatively with more confirmation so the rules of entry and exit can change it's easy to calculate the reward risk to reward for them which is important to know before you enter a trade if you do not here's the thing fam if you do not know what you stand to lose you will never be excited for whatever you make or you'll never be able, able to wait for whatever you make because you don't know how much you stand to lose the first place boom all right so if you know that you're risking about 100 bucks so you know okay i need to make more than 100 dollars like that's how the game works okay but if you do not know how much you stand to literally lose how, mo how much do you stand to make you would not literally have any idea so it's very important that we literally go over r risk and reward and um, if you just want to make money for a consistent period of time you need to know your risk and reward for every single trade okay i'm going to go over the stuff in deep in detail as we move along as well but just put this in your head if you know your stop loss there's nothing that can hurt you in the stock market okay all right now let's do one really quick all right what do you see right here Anything? Do you see any lines forming? What do you see? Anything? No? Man, what do you see? Nothing. Just use your imagination. Let your imagination kind of take over. In the top left corner of the screen, right here, or the top right corner of the screen, Tesla, the symbol is called, ah, oh, right here. This is Tesla, right? <laughs> so this is what I see. I saw this particular thing, second, third, fourth, I have a few touches. Then at the bottom, one, two, three, four. Okay, so what I did, I drew the lines like this. What does it look like now? A pole, yes. Then I kind of drew this, which is a pennant, and the, finally the breakout. Boom. You see what I'm talking about right here, fam? So what do you see? What do I see? I see a bullish, literally, I'll put myself right here. I see bullish pennant forming and break out to the upside. I, you know, there's fancy names for everything. I just call everything a flag, pretty much. I call everything a flag, fam. I ain't gonna lie. Okay. These prices shot past the green line and which was a resistance and it shoot it up. If in this triangle, if you're drawing this correctly, the prices will literally go nine out of 10 times at the end. At the ending stages of this triangle, it's very easier to kind of spot this and it's called consolidation period. You see this, this around here, the trend is very wide. But as we're approaching this little thing, it's getting a little bit tighter. Like it's getting a little bit tighter and then it finally breaks out. Okay, this is when the volume trading participation is lower because everybody's waiting for the breakout. People don't want to put no money in. Like, look at this volume. Nobody want to put any money in. After every every period of consolidation, a breakout will take place. A big consolidation, like such a big consolidation, a big breakout will take place. All right, will take place. You just want to know when, where, how, and why the breakout is happening. You need to catch the move. You need to catch the big trade. All right, let's go over this stuff now really quickly let me put myself back in my original position let's break this down all right now pennant continuation pattern it's a continuation pattern why because it goes back in the original direction pennants are very short-term continuation patterns they mark a consolidation period and literally it goes like this forms stuff like this and go higher you can literally pause this video and take a screenshot of this okay this is what it kind of goes like it's a pattern and forms things like this and makes a big move okay i like trading this you can trade this on a five minute chart as well all right it's simple okay next one is flag same thing i like to call everything a flag to me everything is pretty much a flag i like to call everything a flag all right continuation pattern again same thing the continuation patterns price kind of um, is in a little channel right now and then when it breaks we can catch a big move for example right here it was forming a little flag pattern right here made a big move now you can kind of look at length of a and length of b i don't do it this way personally it's cool easier to say it like this but it's very hard to manage your trades with this 
use. So I always use this on a smaller time frames, like five minute, and I'll keep taking profits. I'll you know at the every support and resistance levels, and I'll break that down in my trading secret, which I'm you know moving forward further down the course. I'm breaking down as well. Okay. Now bullish symmetrical triangle. What is this? Again, just a flag for me, fam. You see what I'm saying? This pattern looks similar to pennant and looks similar to the flag. And what I do, it's a symmetrical triangle, um, same thing. Again, looks like a flag. And the moment everything breaks out, it should break out with a lot of volume. Then comes very symmetrical triangle. Stocks moving down, then it kind of goes like this. Again, just another flag for me. All right, same thing. Stocks moving down, another flag. The volume picked up the moment it broke out. Sweet, low volume doing the little flag thing. There's low volume. Ascending triangle, same thing. You see what I'm saying? Same thing, it's just like another flag. It's just like a flag that's forming on the charts for me. What happened? Like, look at this, a firm holding right here. Just a big freaking flag forming, either to the downside or to the upside, whatever. Wherever side it breaks, I'ma trade that. You see what I'm saying? That's how I trade, that's how I make money, baby. All right, and the volume at the breakout's always gonna be high. Then the descending triangle, same thing. Another flag, fam, boom. Another flag, moment it broke down, boom, I'ma make the move. Volume picks up when it breaks down. You see what I'm saying? Then comes bullish rectangle, same shit. Hey, keeping it simple, just a flag. You see what I'm saying? Just a flag, boom. The moment it breaks out, the volume gonna pick up and you can catch this move, right? Then comes bearish rectangle, same thing. Downside, flag forming, bang, you can catch this move. Like, oh, forgot to change the image, but you got the point, right? <laughs> it was just, this right then comes price channel what is the price channel now fam now yes of course i could have taken a lot of time breaking the stuff down but my whole point here is to make things easy for you okay everything that's forming a big move then making a little it's pretty much a flag for me i don't like to make my life hard i'm one of those dudes i'm i like simplicity man like i'll only wear this black black t-shirt every day reason uh, it's not that i only have one i have like probably 30 of them i just don't like to show off too much i like simple man just simplicity everywhere it's the best okay it just keeps you calm like here's the reason like before we even start this now if i buy a fancy toy if i buy a fancy toy for myself like let's say a car first things i am using the energy to buy the car because i do not know anything about them second um now i have the car now i need to maintain the car there's more energy going towards it Third, now I have the car sitting in the garage collecting dust. I need to keep it clean, the maintenance. The fourth, I have it, so I need to drive it, right? More energy going into it. Fifth, you're gonna break down. Then there's more energy gonna go into it. Ah, oh, registration, insurance, all this stuff. No, I don't do that crap. I haven't got time for that, right? I'd rather chill. Man, Uber goes everywhere. I have a car, like normal car, just like everybody. Why? Simple. I don't care if the car breaks down. That car breaks down, I'll just leave it on the side of the road. Who cares? You see what I'm saying? Because I make, every day I make more money than how much the car costs pretty much. Think about it for a minute. Why? I value my time too much. I don't want to waste no energy or nothing. I'd rather spend time with my family. See what I'm saying? Now let's go over this price channel. Price channel is literally the trend line or support line, uh, resistance line, but in a little pattern like this, all right? This is called price channel. For example, you see right here, price channel, price broke and literally broke for this 144, was trading on 180. Price channel, exactly, same thing. It, it was just a downside thing. I told you if the down trend line breaks, you're gonna make a nice move up, okay? Now, then one next one is called cup and handle pattern. Again, crap. I don't like to look at a cup and handle. I like to just look at the last move. Another flag. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? This is, this is a overextended version for no fucking reason to confuse you. Boom, flag move up what happened it went up because of a flag not because of a fucking cup right you see what i'm saying it just boom made a flag shoot up and not because of the freaking no cup all right everything's pretty much everything's a flag for me all right now let's go over reversal patterns this is where the fun begins okay now reversal patterns so far we discussed the continuation patterns now we're going to discuss the reversal patterns and how do we spot them how do we bank money on them let's start jump straight into them now double top reversal pattern double top and reversal pattern so the left peak of the shoulder right peak of the shoulder is sitting literally um this is the this is the shoulder one this is the shoulder two sitting on the neck and this is a support line or a neckline the moment neckline breaks comes back retest makes another flag toward the downside you trade the flag boom in trading double t double top is name um of unique chart pattern shaped like an m okay like this look at this if i zoom in right here you'll see the flag forming again you see this it went to retest this kind of made a little flag 
boom. Left peak, right peak, volume will pick up the moment it breaks out and it'll make a nice move down. That's pretty much what it is. Double bottom reversal pattern, what a W, but towards the end, it gives you a flag, you trade that. Okay, this can kind of brings it in your attention, but you trade the flag at the same time. You see what I'm saying? Again, boom. Man, I forgot to change the image again. My bad, fam, but you got it, man. Right, you, you just, just um, reverse this, all right? Now, next one, head and shoulder, right? Head and shoulder, what is this? There's a left shoulder, there's a head, there's a right shoulder. Man, I just look at it, the goddamn flag. I'm, I do not make life hard. I just look at this flag. I, I'm gonna trade the flag. This kind of brings stuff into my attention, but that's all I do. Then comes this reverse freaking head and shoulder. Same, I treat this as a flag and I trade that. You see what I'm saying? I, that That's who I am. I just either this flag or either this flag. This can bring things to my attention, but I'm never kind of looking at it. I'll never be like, oh, nah, let me make my life hard. Nah, let me keep my life easy. Same, another flag. Falling wedge, another flag, just a flag. You see what I'm saying? Prices can move up, right? Then comes your rising wedge, another flag. The moment it breaks, goddamn, you catch that. Boom. And what is this? Rounding bottom. But treat this another flag. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Things are just there to confuse you so you never become profitable. I promise you, half of the shit that you hear on the internet, man, it's just there to confuse you so you never become profitable. So literally, you become a commodity at the end of the day. I'm gonna I'm give you the real source, all right? Because I love you, all right? Go out there and make some fucking money, why not? All right, I come from literally no money. I come from India and I moved here 2018, January 2018 to a new country by myself, all new. And I built this by myself, nobody fucking helped me. Yeah, of course I learned from a lot of YouTube channels. Of course I always give credit to everybody who kind of helped me when I was down. But at the end of the day fam, I was I helped myself because I watched the YouTube video. Like you're helping yourself right now by watching this YouTube video. You see what I'm saying? My only goal for you is to go out there fucking print some money fam. All right, why not? Because you and your mama deserve to live good. All right, next. This is like another thing to confuse you. Top one, top two, top three. Man, this is too much. Triple top, fucking four top, five top, diamond pattern, that pattern, that pattern. Nah, fuck that, man. Make, keep your life easy, fam. You see what I'm saying? Oh, people look at, oh, this is a diamond pattern. This is a fucking this pattern. This is this hexagram pattern. Da, 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 da. Man, fuck. man I, I look at this. I'm like, man, what the heck are you guys on about? <laughs> Bro, keep it simple. All right, because simplicity is where money is. All right, now. In the next one, we're gonna go over how to trade using technical analysis. And this is the fun bit, all right? This is where the fun begins, how to trade using technical analysis, and this is where the money making topics start, all right? And we are about halfway in, and maybe maybe a little more than half, maybe less than half, but we're about halfway in, and you're doing good. Pause the video, go out, and um, you know, get a drink, or maybe even do it tomorrow, who cares? Because I'm now I'm sitting down, I'm just gonna you know, just smash this, but you can just pause the video. I'll see you in a minute. So now, in this particular part of the video, we're gonna go over how to trade using technical analysis. We'll break it down, what is the matter, and how to kind of make money using this stuff. All right, let's go over this. Now, first things first, so far, we spoke about candles, we spoke about time frames, we spoke about charts, we spoke about chart patterns, candlestick supports, resistance, trend lines, all the stuff. Candlestick patterns, this, that, a lot of stuff. Now let's talk about how you can put all this into perspective and see how it would all be looking on the charts, how we can make money using this technical analysis. Now you know candlesticks. How do we put candlesticks together? How we use everything together, all right? So first things first, what is technical analysis? Technical analysis is the means of examining and predicting price movement in the financial market using history, of the charts and market statistics. It's basically just looking at the charts and be like, all right, you know what? I think market can go up. It is based on the idea that trader can identify previous market patterns that can reasonably predict future price trajectories. In technical analysis, we do not look at the company statistics. All we care about is charts. Like, I don't even care what the name of the company is. I just want to trade it. That's it. Man, you can give literally, fam. I lit I'm happy to do some, if, bro, I'm happy to do this challenge. Put me in a room, put me in a room, Give me a trading account every single day. Don't even tell me what's the name of the stock. Give me $10,000 and can turn the $10,000 to $100,000. Don't even tell me the name of the stock. You see what I'm saying? I can turn 10 to 100,000 as soon as possible. All I care about is charts. If there's no trade setting up, I'm not taking a trade. If there's a trade setting up, I'm making sure I'm taking a trade. That's how I trade. You see, that's how I make money. Tech, what is technical analysis? You got it, right? Let's go over the next bit, which is a little bit more in detail, technical analysis, all right? Now, what is this right here? This is a support, this is a resistance right here at the top. This is a support right here at the bottom, which is getting holded. Next day, the moment it break, made a nice move up. 
Now, the example here is of AMD, break of resistance level of 149 after the stock pushed all the way down to literally all the way up to 152.59. You see the stock price has moved higher as soon as we broke the resistance as the bias took over and made the price push like crazy. Right here, what happened? This is the resistance, uh, literally the support level that you see right here. What happened? The example here is of Tesla, break of support level of 1,149.66 after the stock dipped down to literally 1,030. You see what I'm saying? Big move down. That's even 1,000. That's a big move down. Like, God damn. That's $120 move down. You see the stock price literally moved lower as soon as it broke the support and the literally the sellers took over. All right. Now, let's talk about a trade that I found from A to Z and how I was able to capitalize on it. All right. This trade we found from literally the starting to finish and how much money I made. I think this was probably the biggest trade um, that I took by the time when I was like literally sitting down. Um, finalizing this stuff or when maybe the first trade that i made most amount of money on yeah kind of now this was in last week of june i was scanning for trades i noticed on amazon there was a clean resistance line on weekly chart there's a weekly chart i noticed there's a clean resistance line on a weekly chart where it retested over and over again 35 54 multiple times already like boom 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 i'm like damn this looks good straight away i knew that i discovered a cold mine this is it see what i'm saying now i then went to the daily chart to kind of get a zoomed in version of what's happening just to see if i you know if i see a little bit a little bit better on the daily chart it looked like this like daily chart weekly chart man i'm like god damn this really looks clean you see what i'm saying this really does look clean now the time had come i was very very ready for the amazon to for a big move above this 35 54 i knew if that breaks towards the upside gonna make a nice move up this is what happened fam boom the market opened it broke above this 35.54 went all the way up to 36.85 now let's see how this play went amazon broke the resistance buyer stepped in and sent it flying all the way up to 36.85 from 35.54 that's a 132 dollar move this play was a textbook place i had one of my biggest days as i was able to catch this whole move with a big size now it's up to you that you want to call me lucky or you want to call that i was just very prepared my preparation met the opportunity. I made about $149,000 on this particular trade back in the day. You see what I'm saying? Because I caught this big move. How did I discover this move? I found this on weekly, then I found it on daily. I'm like, damn, I'm ready for this. Now you see how I saw the opportunity, showed you exactly how I planned my trade and printed money on it. Let me show you more. All right, look at this. So during the pre-market, I realized Netflix had a very, very strong day before. Now we have a strong resistance level sitting at 666. Check the photo around here. Right? I'm like, damn, this looks good. But I was fully ready for the trade and knew it. if we went above 666, it can make a crazy move. Again, very easy. Here's how it went. You ready to go? The moment Netflix broke above, this is money fam. The moment Netflix broke above 666, buyers took over. As soon as we broke above 666, they pushed it all the way up to 676 before having any sort of pull back now that's a ten dollar move in about 25 minutes the momentum buying picked up the sellers moved away and netflix paid me fat as you see right here man all i did was like from like i just looked at key support and resistance levels they can be very accurate can be very very profitable enter at the confirmation that the stock has either flushed out or literally taken out the levels if sellers have stepped down and buyers have taken over the bullish momentum will be strong if literally and all the sellers have moved aside and only way to sell, see if the sellers have moved aside is you literally wait for your critical level to break that usually means means the buyers are taking over okay now that's how you make money like this fam this is how you use technical analysis this is how we make money you see what i'm saying so easy it's so easy but people make it so complicated don't have to be complicated making money can be easy so keep it easy man i promise you you will make more money all right now let's go over some glossary for options so let me break down some stuff about option trading that i use every single day all right now i thought it would be perfect time for me to kind of break down some basic key terms that i use in trading options every single day so let me break that down the first one is the receipt of an option exercise da, 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 whatever i like to i'll just give you an example of literally think of it as a coupon all right the coupon that you got and get that's pretty much what an option contract is so you have a coupon for two dollars that you can have a hot dog and the coupon expires december 25th okay so when you go to that stand you see um hot dogs are seven bucks so you take your coupon out you're like yeah and they give you for the two dollars that's options 
How? That means you have this and the seller, the seller of the hot dog has to sell you the hot dog at $2 because he promised to do so because of the coupons. Doesn't matter what the price is now. Same thing. If you buy option contracts and you tr and you want to literally, nobody like we don't, we just trade premiums. But if you want to exercise those option contracts, right? If the price you bought them at 100 and the price went to 500 and you want to exercise them, that means whosoever sold you, he gave you a coupon that you can buy 100 shares at $100 each. So it doesn't matter what the price is, he still have to sell you at 100, right? Doesn't matter what the price for hot dog is, he still have to have to sell you at $2. That's pretty much what it is. Okay, don't get over overcomplicated, don't overcomplicate. Every option controls 100 shares. That's just easy, okay? Now, the relationship between strike price and the current stock price, an option is at the money when the stock price is equal to the strike price. For example, if stock price is 100 and you wanna do calls, okay? The $100 strike, pri $100 strike price on options will be at the money because it's right sitting at the stock price. 101 will be out of the money. 99 will be in the money, okay? Because price is 100, so that's in the money. It's already inside the money right now. Because if you buy that, that's like a coupon code that you buy for two, that you get for two, um, the $2 coupon code when the price is already $3. That's in the money coupon code. But if you get it for $3, when the price is already three, but you're hoping maybe in future it goes up, that's at the money. But out of the money is, you literally go, let me buy a coupon code for $7, but price right now is three. You're expecting that by the time I use it, maybe the price of this particular thing will be ten dollars you see what i'm saying that's that's simply what it is fam all right don't oh, no need to overcomplicate none of this stuff all right a call is one type of an option for each contract you buy you have the right to purchase under shares again you have the right you can either choose to exercise or you can just be like that. Ah, I don't want to exercise, nothing, all right? Now, after this date, a listed option price contract cease to exist. There's a um, expiry point for those option contracts. And after that, there's literally, the co those particular things are expired. The coupon codes expires, okay? You get my point? Now, if you can go out there and try to learn more about these options and what it means, there's actually four and a half hour course, I think four and a half hour course that I have on literally YouTube sitting there for free. You can watch that, learn everything that you need to know about options, all right? If you have no idea about options, go watch that. Break that down into like seven different days. So four hours. How long is that? 240 plus 10 minutes on top, maybe 250 hours, break into 10 different days. You only need to watch like 25 minutes a day. You'll be able to finish the video. You see what I'm saying? So if you want to go and finish that, sweet, because there's literally no point in me going over options again, because I'm just going to give you some glossary and then you'll be maybe even more confused. Let's keep it towards stocks. Yeah, I think so too. If you want to learn more about options, go and enjoy that video after finishing this video. Okay, and you got it. But I explained to you what is the meaning of option contract and the coupon code and stuff. I'll just give you a little um, little head start now. But options, options can look more complex than it is. If you're looking at simple option trading, it's something goes like this. Option trading is trading instrument that gives you right to buy it. Da, 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 da. This is like complicated version. Option, simply man, in simple words, think about this. Options are calls that you're betting that the price is to go up, but you're betting the price is to go down. Now you do not have to literally exercise your contracts. Literally the premiums, if the stock goes from $100 to 101, premium will move from 110 to let's say 150. That means this 40 cents, which is $40 profit on every single contract. That's pretty much what it is. All right, that's all. The two different types of options called inputs. Boom. Okay, no need to overcomplicate it. What is a put option? Put option just means that you're betting that the prices can go down. Yes, you can make money when the prices go down. I promise you. All right, how does option trading work? Man, option trading is simple. Option trading you can literally do off your broker. I personally use interactive brokers. And what is it? Buying a call. Buying a call simply means you're betting that the prices to go up. That's all it is. You see what I'm saying? That's simple. Now, what is buying a put? Just go over this stuff if you want to or go watch the video that I told you to go watch. Um, but how are options priced? Options are priced calculated by different models, but the roots, it's just intrinsic value and time value. You might be getting confused a lot right now. So what I'll do is that you can take a screenshot if you already know what options are, sweet. If you do not know, have any idea what options are after this video, I'll, I'll put the link in the description box below and go watch the video, all right? Now, this is where the money begins, fam. I'm gonna go over how I day trade. I believe in the saying that if if you give a man a fish, you feed him for the day. But if you teach him how to fish, you feed him for life. I just want to feed you for life. Boom. So my goal right now is to give out real information for you who I believe have the potential to f literally do something big and great for your families. If you're here, man, rather than going out there and watching Netflix or freaking Showtime or freaking anything else, bro, you have what it takes. 
okay if you're watching an hour and a half into this video you know what to do all right so take out some pen and paper because i will give you ex exactly everything that i do all right from my pre-market to during market and after hours schedule i'll break everything down into three different steps for ease of understanding for you all right let's go over this stuff step one for me personally everything starts with the pre-market times I will come to my office around 8 a.m. Eastern time. The first thing I do is I open up my news platform. My news platform is google.com. So simple, but so confusing. You do not need to pay, man, keep your life simple. You don't need to pay fucking some platform to give you news. Google.com. I, I read all the news that I come. Um, I feel comfortable trading. And these are the only stocks that I feel comfortable trading. You know how I search news? I'll just put this dollar sign, spy. That's it. That's all I do. It gives me the news. Then I put QQQ news. So basically what I do is I'll read all the news till one, uh, literally half an hour. Now, the question you may ask is why read the news? Now, it's necessary to read the news from overnight to see if anything important has occurred and how it may impact market sentiment surrounding each stock. Now, I open my trading view charts with a one hour time frame to start the, literally start the charts. All right, secret tip. I learned this tip from somewhere I don't exactly remember, but secret tip, most money, most, most smart money uses one hour charts to find out the supply and demand zones on the charts. Most of them use one hour charts and uh, smart money is the big hedge funds okay big hedge funds big money management so i'll show you some examples of how easy it is to determine critical supply and demand areas using one hour chart okay you ready for it now we have read some news we know news is good now we can literally go over our one hour chart and we can draw some levels and i'll show you how easy it is to kind of draw and determining these critical levels it's easy all right let's go over this nvidia 298.8 determined pre-market dumped to 288 Boom, this is where the level came from. SPY, this is where the level kind of came from in the pre-market, boom. SPY, we determined this level, it went to this. Apple, Amazon, 31.19. Man, I, I forgot to change the charts, eh? Forgot to change the charts again. Um, Amazon, same thing. We drew the level and it dumped, okay? Shopify, what happened? We determined the level from the pre-market. Don't make it hard, man. People go back too much, man. Don't make it hard, just keep it so simple. This is how you can make money. You see what I'm saying? Now, what happened? Meta, we determined this level, all right, 326 from the pre-market and it literally went to about 333 from what I remember, all right? Then Netflix, 665, determined where they go. This is where it came from. Man, critical levels come from right here on the charts. Where they go? 685, 680 plus. You see what I'm saying? Again, Netflix determined, we determined this level. The moment it broke, it went down to 596. So these are just examples of a couple of days. I do this scan every single day of every single year. Now I've been doing this literally from a long time now and they have never ever, literally they always got my back. So cheers. All right, this is step one. Step two now comes is after we have determined all the key levels in our pre-market, now we have to know how to trade those in real time. Now, considering how key these levels are, man, I've been trading for, for a while now. Um, I mostly enter the first break. The moment I see a break, I will enter. Most individuals wait for one or five minute chart to kind of, um, you know, close above, verify, but fuck that. After one to five minutes, I'm already taking some profits while you're still considering an entry. As soon as the stock breaks, the key level I pre-plan in the pre-market, I enter straight away as long as is followed by volume from false breakouts will happen but it's not a big deal if you know how to cut stop loss okay so now take a look how this kind of would have gone let's go now netflix entry at 665 with strong volume right boom look at the volume big move right nvidia entry 298 point with strong volume look at this volume went up right and these examples are very very simple man this is like i enter straight away most of the time they bring big moves big money in the stock okay now step three is profit taking now planning your exits is one thing man but if you do not know how to actually get out of the trades you're going to be struggling a lot i'll show you some methods that i exit my trades with on strong volume days i like to enter with some size and take first like if i entered 50 contracts right here that i was watching 326 level that i showed you back um three slides ago i'm taking like 50 percent off look at this i exited 30 contracts at 327 then i exited another five another five another five another three another two that's what i do you see like slowly you get what i'm saying if you're only playing with one or two contracts i would recommend having a mental trailing stop loss holding the winners for the rest of the move okay just add a mental loss so okay close above 327 if it closes below 327 i'll get out i close above 328 if it closes below i'll get out boom 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 you catch a big move okay one way you can ensure that the stock is in an uptrend if the price is holding 8 and 21 ema on its way on the five minute chart 
okay if it's holding 28 ema or 21 ema on a five minute chart that's what i like see what i'm saying just remember the indicators are all lag the most effective way to kind of go about is reading level two and time themselves okay now i'll show you how to read the chart like the whole thing man okay here's the thing there's three steps people make it too complicated man the three same steps are very 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 simple okay the first step is i read the news every single day the moment i come to this literally my office you know the first thing that i do i read all the news why why do i like to read the news because i want to know if anything happened overnight that can literally change the trajectory of the stocks that i'm about, i want to trade so i want to read the news then i draw some levels and i keep it simple then what i do then i like to wait for an entry with a lot of volume then what do i do then i like to take some profits as it goes higher of course stop loss will get triggered sometimes but if you know where to get out you can't get hurt you see what i'm saying and the stop losses usually are if the critical level is trying to break and it you know it couldn't close above or anything or if i entered and it made a false breakout i'll just jump out that's it all right now risk management the fun topic okay we all like this risk management right risk management what is risk management Risk management is the process of identifying risk and limiting it as much as possible. Just identifying how much you stand to lose and limiting how much you stand to lose is what risk management is. Managing risk helps limit losses and protect traders from blowing their accounts. Man, trading is surrounded by risk. So you need to literally try to diminish the risk as much as possible. What are the common signs that you you are not following any risk management common size that show you you do not have risk management you're risking more than you potentially making you have no plan you end up holding your trades ever done it you are risking more than you're potentially making you have no plan on a trade how to enter how to exit you end up holding on to your losing trade and selling your you know winning trade you dump all your money in every trade without knowing how much you will potentially lose if you're wrong you see what i'm saying your positions are way too large which leads to significant losses all it takes is one trade to literally destroy your whole account if you use literally man if you see yourself doing any of this thing please stop you're not a trader but more of a gambler so hey this is for you so make sure you go out and take some notes okay now what are the components of risk management first thing is you need to identify risk the first component of risk management is know what you stand to lose at first thing okay now risk to reward ratio the next step is to establish our risk to reward ratio does this trade make sense for us to take how much are we risking to make what are we anticipating how much is the risk ah uh, man do i even want to take this risk ah uh, nah uh, yeah yeah all this right so if you think oh i'm risking about 30 cents on this particular trade but it has a potential to make me five dollars that's a beautiful risk to reward but if you think oh this trade can literally make me 30 cents but um the risk is 30 cents but the reward is about 15 cents would you take this trade no the risk to reward ratio okay position sizing during this step you need to calculate how many contract shares you can trade based on your risk per account size and if you have a thousand dollar account you see what I'm saying? If you have a thousand dollar account, your position size should be 200 to 300. If you have a small account, that's your position size. So risk would be like 20 to 40 or 50 bucks or whatever, 10, 20%. Now, then you need to manage your risk. This is where you execute the trade, embrace the risk. Hey, you need to jump in at the end of the day. If you do not jump into a trade, you never fucking make no money because you, you need to be in it to win it. And see, you need to risk it for the biscuit at the end of the day all right now what is risk to reward ratio the risk to reward ratio is the difference between the potential profit versus potential loss risk how much are you willing to lose if this trade doesn't work out reward how much will you make if this trade worked out as expected before you enter every trade there are three things you must know where are you expecting to take profits where are you expecting to enter where would you take a loss if this doesn't work you see what i'm saying there's three things that i always like to know if this is my entry this is my let's say stop loss and this is like 30 cents profit target is about 80 cents or 90 cents make calculations easy and this is a profit target that i have so i'm risking about 90 cents I'm, I'm risking about 30 cents to make 90 cents so my risk is 30 cents my reward is 90 cents that means i have one to three risk to reward ratio think about it that means i'm risking one dollar to make three that's good that's very good 
You see what I'm saying? That's why you need to know where you, where you're looking to take profits, where you're entering, where your stop loss. Okay. Now, what is a good risk to reward ratio? A good risk to reward ratio is anything greater than two, or where you are risking one dollar to make at least two dollars. How can I calculate position sizing? To calculate proper position sizing, you need the following. Total trading capital. Well, how much money do you have in your trading cap trading account? The percentage of your account you wish to risk. The stop loss area on every single trade. Generally speaking, you should not risk more than 2% of your entire trading capital on any given trade. Now, 2%, I do not mean, I simply mean 2% the risk. I don't mean position size. If you have $10,000 in your trading account and you know that's like a decent sized trading account if you're ten thousand dollars in a trading account and that's actually a very good amount of money to trade two percent of this what is this 200 bucks don't risk more than two to three hundred bucks now that means your position size can be thousand dollars but if you're risking about two percent that means you need to be making if you're risking 200 bucks that means you need to be making four five hundred dollars per trade right that's how the risk reward makes sense otherwise the risk reward don't make sense See what I'm saying? Now, if you have 5K in your trading account, you should not risk more than $100. That means the position size would be 500 bucks and 20% of 500 is like 100 bucks, all right? If you know the strategy, like if you know how to trade, if you know the strategy, if you know how to control the risk and everything, um, like I teach my students how to kind of control the risk and all the sort of stuff that they need to know, bro, they can literally take $1,000 position size on a $5,000 account and they can literally take their account from wherever they are to making about $1,000 a day, every single day. You see what I'm saying? It's all about how confident you are in your trading setup right now your position size can be thousand two thousand but don't try to lose any more than hundred dollars right have a risk management plan is essential now what is position sizing <laughs> we broke down this whole thing position sizing number of shares or contracts that you can trade based on total number of risks that you're based on account size dumb traders dump their entire trading account in one trade whereas smart traders know how much capital are they going to put in each trade okay what is a risk management plan a risk management plan helps you limit your losses and drawdowns by setting rules and guidelines you need to have rules you need to have guidelines that's how you're gonna make money otherwise you make no money okay now what is the risk to reward ratio identify your risk tolerance the first thing you need to do in this what's your risk tolerance maybe you feel comfortable like i see some people they lose hundred dollars they're like man my life is so shit bro if you feel that way cool that means don't lose any more than 100 because you'll like that's it you're done you see what i'm saying if you feel like hundred dollars a lot of money to lose that's your risk tolerance maybe lose 50 don't lose any more than that all right like this is what always surprises me about people they think hundred dollars losing hundred dollars a lot of money they don't want to risk hundred dollars but they want to make a million dollars i mean bro the numbers don't make sense to make million to make millions you're gonna risk thousands all right, tens of thousands. But to make hundreds, you risk hundreds. You see what I'm saying? To risk, to make thousands, you gotta risk thousands. So make sure you have realistic goals as well. You can't be literally. Uh, I'm not one of those people who are gonna tell you, oh, you can take your thousand dollar trading account to a million dollars in a matter of a year. No, you can't do that shit. There, yeah, no, that's not how it works. All right, decide how much do you want your risk to reward to be on each trade, risk reward ratio to be on each trade. Give it your, give you. Oh man, I will not take any trade that. Does does not give me one to four personally for me i'm even happy with one to one you see what i'm saying i'm happy to risk a dollar to make a dollar why because i know my strategy works about 85 percent of the time that means even if i lose let's say if i lose a dollar and i make a dollar okay times 85 times it works 15 times it doesn't work when it works i make 85 dollars out of 100 trades 15 times it doesn't work i lose 15 that means i'm still profitable 70 dollars because my win rate is high i'll still be profitable so i'm even happy with one to one you see what i'm saying decide how much do you want to risk per your trading account then you need rules for your plan and then keep tracking them and keep tuning them all right you need to sit down and make your rules very very important now my risk management rules my general rule to follow is three to one this rule can be used like this is the rule that i always teach everybody my, i teach my students this rule can be used in many distinct ways if you long nvidia at 250 with three to one risk to reward and your profit taken is 253 and a stop loss is at 249 it can also be used if you buy a contract and you take profit at 30 percent or cut stop loss at 10 percent the more you are right the more you can risk man period you see what i'm saying consistency is everything in trading now someone put some personal ways to reduce risk i buy always buy into small position sizing right i always buy small position sizes see what i'm saying that's how i do what i do i buy small position sizes and i make a lot of money okay i buy boom then i'll add more i add more i add more as the stock's moving high i'm adding more does it make sense now then i want to take profits about like 10 to 20 percent i take some off 
that's just me i want to take some off i want to pay myself for trying to find this beautiful setup that i found okay i only enter the trades that i'm confident in i never ever over trade if i'm not confident about a trade man i'm not jumping in a trade period you see what i'm saying like i want to be confident in a place so i can dump my money in the trade all right now the next one comes is when you hit your goal for the day like i have a goal if i make ten thousand five thousand eight thousand whatever i walk away i'm like done man it's it's good all right so have a walk away limit for the downside and for the upside both all right and if you're in a trade and your stop loss hits exit hope is not a strategy sitting in hope doesn't doesn't make you money all right hopium doesn't make you money hope's not a strategy all right do not hope and there are no emotions in trading fam there's no emotions do not hold your contracts until they're valueless hoping that someday some you know please god man god got bigger things to worry about rather than you freaking not being disciplined enough you see what i'm saying so next is don't use 50 indicators on your charts i promise you like there's no one indicator that will work 100 percent of the time keep it simple and the next one would be always every single day man review your trades every single day make sure you journal your trades so when i'm journaling my trades i'm always asking myself three questions first trade is why did i enter second is why did i exit the third one is what would i do better next time and you always need to journal every single time and it takes a lot of time to be consistent fam it took me about 14 months to be consistent trader okay start small man blowing accounts is very very common in the beginning and this a lot of traders do this so you if you start small man you will avoid yourself the pain of literally blowing a, blowing your account and losing and everything all right and uh, the next point which is the huge point the 12th point that i have is make sure you analyze your journals over the weekend what people do is they journal their trades but they never go over their journals so you need to journal your trades at the end of the week so you can find out your weakness you can find out your strength if you do not know them man you will struggle you'll struggle bad see what i'm saying and then comes our keep our ego on the side fam the goal here is not to be right or wrong the goal here is to make money that's why you're trading okay and literally the last one that i have for you if you want to make really make money let the trades come to you don't go out there and try to hunt for plays let the trades come to you because when the trades come to you you have an edge when nothing comes to you you do not have an edge okay and one quote that i love if nothing is happening in the market you should do nothing if market is slow sit on your cash or light your cash on fire and I, I always thought like this is like one of the coolest things i ever heard but yeah so what next fam what next let's go let me show my screen again and boom what do we do here man we went over basic terminology we went over how to read candlesticks candlestick patterns how to set up your trading view charts some examples of these patterns on a daily chart support and resistance levels some chart pattern faqs how to trade using technical analysis we went over some options and then how i day trade consistently and then we broke down some risk management and my rules that i use all sort of stuff i see what i'm saying this is the stuff that we do every single day fam <clears throat> now i really really hope that you enjoy this video okay thank you the fancy thank you i really hope you enjoy this video let me know in the comments down below if you actually enjoyed this video and if you want me to make more of these videos by the way i'll also put the option course right here if you want to just click here and you can you know, watch the option trading course as well follow make sure you follow me on instagram and like the video so i know you enjoyed this let me know in the comments all right peace you have a good one goodbye